A very good morning to everybody. Uh, thank you so much for attending uh, this morning. Um, it's a pleasure to have so many persons on, on board with us this morning. Um, my name is Maria Fowell, and I am the OECS Senior Technical Specialist for Tourism. And I am and have the pleasure of being your moderator for today's webinar. This webinar is a stakeholder engagement and awareness activity under the Recycle OECS project, which is being implemented by the OECS Commission in partnership with the Agence Française de Développement, the ADF. Um, according to the World Tourism Organization, solid waste management is an important aspect in, in sustainable development of tourism in, in a destination. Tourism itself can negatively impact the environment of a destination due to visitor activities. Further ineffective solid waste management can negatively impact the quality of the environment of a tourism destination. The challenges related to effective waste management is particularly concerning for small island states such as the OECS member states with economies that are all dependent on tourism. In general, OECS countries have some solid, have solid waste management systems and some infrastructure in place. However, for the most part, there is very little source separation or collection of recyclables, no, no readily accessible local markets for recycled waste, and the cost of managing waste is exorbitant, posing a challenge for many of the OECS governments to implement effective waste management systems. The OECS Commission is leading the regional OECS sustainable development agenda through the pillars of regional integration, collective action, and development cooperation. One of the, of the frameworks guiding this agenda in the, is the Eastern Caribbean Regional Ocean Policy and Strategic Plan, which is a, a blueprint for the regional coordination on sustainable development, management, and the conservation of OECS marine space and resource therein. Water quality and marine pollution are areas of priority focus of the ECROP in view of the threat posed by marine pollution in the subregion to the transition to a blue economy. A range of interventions are currently in progress to leverage economic economies of scale within the aim, with the aim of establishing an integrated approach to waste management at the member state and regional levels. With funding under the 11th EDF, that's the European Development Fund, the OECS Commission, in partnership with ADF, is implementing the OECS Recycle OECS project to design and test an adaptable, sustainable model for waste separation, collection, and recycling of and recycling in two OECS member states. The, OECS, the Recycle OECS project aims to reduce plastic pollution by developing and demonstrating an OECS model for plastic waste separation, collection, and recycling. The model considers a regional approach, self-financing, sustainability, and business viability. Public participation and behavior change are vital to this, the success of this effort to introduce circular economy principles to waste management at member state and OECS levels. More, moreover, buy-in across all, all sectors will give impetus to the OECS blue economy agenda and, <clears throat> and the EU Caribbean Partnership for Co Cooperation on circle economy matters. It is my pleasure to introduce our three panelists for today's webinar, who will be presented in this order. Mr. Ronald Roach, Director Water and Waste from Unite Caribbean Limited. Mr. Russ Fielding, General Manager of True Blue Bay Resort in Grenada. 
Ms. Carolyn Trubiskoy, Executive Director, Marketing and Operations for Anchastney Resorts and Jade Mountain in St. Lucia, and also wearing chairperson hat of the Caribbean, Bi Caribbean Biodiversity Fund. Each panelist will have 12 to 15 minutes to present, during which time the audience can put questions in our Q&A box. At the end of the three presentations, we will have time for your questions and answers. So with that, I would like to invite our first panelist, Mr. Ronald Roach from Unite Caribbean, who is our waste management expert to make his presentation on the OECS model for sustainable recy recyclables waste management system. Ronald, over to you. Thank you, Maria. It's great to be here. Um, welcome to everyone. So can you confirm? Yes. Just can you put it into presentation mode, please? Great. All right. So as Maria said, I'm here to present the OECS model for sustainable recyclables waste management system as part of the Recycle OECS project. My name is Ronald Roach. I'm the director of Water and Waste at Unite Caribbean and a member of the Sureka Unite Caribbean Consulting Consortium that is implementing the project. So um, the OECS Commission with funds from the U European Union delegation in Barbados and support from the French Development Agency, AFD, is implementing the project Recycle OECS among the critical outcomes for OECS member states from the implementation of Recycle OECS is reducing marine pollution by developing and implementing sustainable waste recycling activities. And just as an introduction, as small island developing states, the OECS faces municipal waste management challenges resulting from and exacerbated by the small size, the high population density, the high dependence on tourism and low technological capabilities. That is lack of strategic approach to waste management, technical skills in operating waste management facilities and sustainable financing arrangements. Packaging waste is also challenging given the high costs of collection, sorting, and shipping, as well as the volatility of market prices. So a lot of people ask, well, you know, why aren't we recycling um, more than we are now? And the reality is it's an expensive process. Um, a lot of the time, the value of the materials, they don't cover the costs associated with collection, sorting, trading, and recycling. So you have to be able to implement um, sustainable systems, um, including sustainable financing systems. And we'll get into some of that shortly. When we talk about um, packaging and plastic packaging in particular, um, again, we have to recognize that all plastics are not the same for the purposes of recycling. Uh, there are basically seven classifications, really six main classifications, and then everything else that does not form part of the six um, falls into the seven, which is other. And uh, for the purposes of recycling, each one of these categories, um, PET, HDP, PVC, LDP, PP, PS, and EPS, um, they all require specific processes for recycling. And therefore, it's not just a question of bunching all together. We need to be able to sort and differentiate between the different types. And that also adds to the cost and the complexity of the operations. So uh, recycling activities need to be well thought of and well planned um, before it can be executed successfully. So what we have done is to develop what we consider to be the five pillars of sustainable recyclables waste management. And these five pillars uh, cover technical, economical, financing, institutional and regulatory and communications and social. So those are the five pillars and I will go into each one of them uh, separately. The technical pillar, it's the pillar that we are most familiar with. Um, and it's the first step to ensure sustainable and efficient recycling activities in OECS countries, um, implementing a separation at source of recycling, recyclable waste and prepared for recycling. The objective of this pillar is to implement separate collection at source 
to process and valorize waste. Um, and it involves separate collection of the recyclables from the mixed waste. And that separate collection ideally should start at the curbside. Um, but again, that is a difficult process and that's a process that requires a lot of planning. So what can be done as well is introduction of depots uh, where the public can bring in um, their recyclables separate from the mixed the mixed waste. The message being once the plastics get mixed into the general waste stream, then it becomes very difficult to be recycled because of the contamination involved. And uh, added to that, we need to target recyclables with added value for the system. And we have to monitor the activity to iteratively adapt and improve it. And what are some of the inputs in national waste strategies? What are some of the outputs? A combination of technical solutions to be costed. And that then leads us to the economic pillar. So the objective is to quantify the costs and optimize the business system. The output of this pillar is a business plan. Quantifying capital and operating costs and developing cost-benefit analyses will be used to define the gaps to be financed to ensure the sustainability of the system. And again, I want to reiterate that recycling is going to cost. Um, most of the plastics, um, because of their lightweight, um, there is uh, a net cost that needs to be um, input into the system because uh, there are tremendous costs in setting up and operating the system. So what is the objective of this pillar? To build a market-driven business plan, optimize and ensure affordability, and uh, the fundamentals being to apply the fuller cost, cost accounting method to iteratively optimize the system and adapt the system to the government's affordability. Inputs being technical solutions, the technical pillar, and outputs being the gaps to finance. So that leads us to the third pillar, which is the financial pillar. And this involves the selection of an appropriate suite of financing mechanisms. Um, and that is key component necessar necessary for ensuring a financially sustainable plastic waste management system. This requires an overall policy legal flame framework clearly defining the responsibilities as well as outlining fair share, transparent allocation of funds and effective monitoring and evaluation. The objective is to achieve financial sustainability and the fundamentals being preparing a sustainable financing plan, applying the polluter pays principle when appropriate, defining governance of the financial system. And for this pillar, it's important to recognize that waste management it is a cost it and whether it be recycling, whether it be landfilling, whether it be even waste to energy, they are all costly activities and someone needs to pay the cost. The best arrangement is where we can apply the polluter pays principle. In other words, who causes the pollution are the ones that um, pay the price of waste management. Um, and that's one of the challenges with developing a sustainable system within our Caribbean countries that is not sufficient financing of waste management. Um, Maria started off by saying that waste management is, is, is costly and that has to be recognized, but it's then a question of who pays for it. And there are a number of mechanisms for financing, um, including uh, residential financing through utility bills, through property tax, um, corporate financing through uh, payment of cost of uh, disposal when waste reaches the landfill sites and so forth. And then once we have agreed on a financing system, the fourth pillar is that of institutional and regulatory. And we have to ensure that the relevant policies, laws, and regulations are considered and developed to support the recycling activities and to protect those involved. So when we agree on a financing system, that financing system has to be put into law and then monitored and enforced. Um, we also need to consider uh, regulations regarding um, businesses and uh, commercial and industrial sector and what they can um, dispose of at the landfill sites. And we also need to consider what um, incentives we can provide for persons who are willing to recycle and who are uh, making the extra effort to minimize their waste and so forth. 
So the objective is to enforce the solutions and ensure proper governance. And the fundamentals are to develop waste management strategies and recycling targets to review and adapt policies and legislation accordingly and to involve private sector, public sector and civil society, given that all of us are generators and we have to play our parts. And the inputs to that a suite of financial mechanisms and the outputs being formalization of all aspects of recycling activities. And then we have the fifth and final pillar, which is that of communications and, so and social. And we have to recognize that coherence in the interagency dialogue for legislative and policy alignment and strategic engagement and involvement of key marketplace and community stakeholders is essential for sustainable outcomes. Public education and awareness is required for citizens to properly separate their plastics. And it also requires a baseline uh, for the monitoring of activities and behavioral change. And programs should be targeted and appropriate for the various audiences, the policymakers, the importers, manufacturers, wholesale and retail, the technical waste management operators, the corporate sector and the communities and the educational sector. So that being the five pillars, um, just to quickly uh, discuss what are the implications for the tourism sector. So certainly the opportunity to participate in the Recycle OECS project within the demonstration countries and to help um, achieve your sustainability goals. Uh, the opportunity to spread the key messages about Recycle OECS as major drivers of change within your ter territories. As a key stakeholder, the opportunity to participate in discussions around sustainable financing for the waste management sector. And then to recognize that with all of this, there may be cost implications based on the polluter pays principle. So it's um, only fair that we all contribute to the cost of the waste that we generate. And when I talk about the demonstration countries, um, the two countries that have been selected and where we are implementing demonstration projects are Dominica and Grenada. And finally, just to um, put forward some, some low hanging fruit in terms of how do we reach the zero waste activities. So of course, participating in the Recycle OECS demonstration projects that are being rolled out in Dominica and Grenada. Uh, for companies to perform your own waste audits to understand the waste being generated and what can be recycled and repurposed. And sometimes it's only when we do that, we recognize that there are so many opportunities to reduce the waste being generated and to recognize that reduction in waste can lead to a reduction in cost as well because you pay to, to move your waste. Um, to get involved in composting, there's so many opportunities, and this is not directly related to Recycle OECS, but there's so many opportunities to get involved in organic recycling, given the fact that organics represent generally the largest component of the waste, um, waste stream. And then to apply sustainability toolkits, there are several available um, that uh, the tourism sector can apply and see how they can um, reach the zero waste. And there is such a great opportunity to eliminate and to reduce single-use plastics, um, single-use packaging, a number of, of um, hotels already doing so. Um, but there is so much more opportunity for that to be done. And, um, you know, there's lots of opportunity to discuss this and to go into some of the details and so, but time doesn't permit. And with that, I would like to say thank you. Thank you so much, Ronald. Um, that was definitely an insightful presentation. Um, indeed, uh, plastic packaging is just about everywhere um, that we look. So, you know, um, the, the approach um, that you've presented, uh, definitely, you know, looking at the, the, the five pillars uh, on the technical, um, um, economic, financial, and um, regulatory and social, I think I'm communication. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, and you also offered some, some zero waste activity recommendations. So thank you so much for that presentation. We'll come back to you um, at the end for, for some additional questions. Um, we would I'd now like to introduce our second panelist. Um, our second panelist is um, out of Grenada, uh, True Blue uh, Bay Resort. And um, 
we we we're moving into highlighting a couple of on the ground case studies within the region and um so i would now invite mr fielding to um who is one of our tourism industry experts to present on the true blue bay resort green initiatives and they really have done a lot of work so um over to you russ Okay, thank you very much indeed, Maria. It's uh, nice, to, to, nice to see you. And uh, Mr. Roach, that was a very interesting uh, presentation you just made, and you covered a lot of the issues that, uh, that I think we all face as hoteliers and, uh, and as countries. I, I think one of the problems we have is that the industrialized world has no concept of the difficulties that small island states have with the disposal of the plastics that they insist on wrapping everything in when they send us everything. Every, everything is wrapped in plastics and there's no need for it. And they dump this stuff on these islands um, and, 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 and the, uh, uh, the, the disposal of this plastic is virtually impossible. Um, so one of the things I think we need to do or the OECS can help us with is, is persuading manufacturers to move away from um, wrapping everything in these damn plastic bags and styrofoam and everything else. In Grenada, we managed to get styrofoam banned about, uh, well, styrofoam uh, single-use uh, containers banned about five, six years ago, uh, which made a substantial difference to the uh, uh, landfill issues. But of course, TVs and washing machines and the like of that still come wrapped in, um, in plastic and styrofoam. So, um, you know, we, we, we need to have some serious lobbying um, on that. Okay, yes, my, my screen has come up. Thank you very much. I'm not, I'm not a great expert with um, these, uh, this technology. So, um, so True Blue Bay Resort, we, uh, we opened the resort uh, 25 years ago. And we've always been committed to um, uh, uh, in in environmentally, environmental uh, issues. Um, we banned uh, at the resort single-use plastic bags some years ago. Um, and there was a huge outcry from the staff. Well, how can we pick up the leaves? How can we do the laundry? How can we do everything? You know, what about the waste in the bathrooms and everything else? But it, it, they still sneak in. I have to say, it's not easy doing this, but uh, single-use plastic bags still manage to find their way in somehow or other. But um, generally speaking, they know that uh, the staff know and uh, um, uh, that we don't have single-use plastic bags. Um, um, so, uh, but what I want to focus on today is more of what we're doing now rather than what we've done in the past. Because uh, up to 2017, we were recycling about 60 to 80 percent of all of our waste. But um, it's, unfortunately, world circumstances changed and COVID came along and, uh, and uh, we lost a lot of that recycling ability. And as Mr. Roach said, it's very, very difficult for these islands to instigate and the recycling of plastics and uh, metals in, and glass and everything else. So what, we've, what we're currently embarking on is uh, we've in implementation of a biodigester, installation of 60 water efficient toilets, expansion of rainwater collection system, implementation of hydroponic system for, for the gardens, solar ACs, uh, we do a lot of uh, collection of data for single-use plastics around the resort, and uh, we do plan to reduce that with the uh, government and OECS uh, assistance over the next two years. Uh, we've expanded our electric car fleet um, and the prep for recycling program that we hope will come. Uh, we had a recycling center. It is now a paint store, uh, but it can easily be converted back into a, a recycling store. And very importantly, we have a very active green team. Next slide, please. Does it work? Yes, it did work. Thank you very much, whoever does that. Okay, the biodigester is a, is, is a, is a wonderful um, uh, machine. As you can see, it's not a, it's not a very big machine. Um, this, uh, we installed it in, 1920, in 2021 um, with, a, with a, a grant from um, uh, various bodies and uh, um, Angus Friday, uh, who you see on the right there, uh, was instrumental in getting this thing going. Um, it produces methane. And what we put into the biodigester is all of our food waste from the, uh, from the kitchens. Um, and some of the garden waste goes in there as well. Uh, also, we were using it for the sargassum seaweed. 
which we know is a problem around the island. So we, uh, every, every night it gets fed, the uh, uh, methane is produced and then it's put into our bakery, which you can't see on the left hand side of the screen there. And we bake bread from it and, the, and some of the pastries and other stuff that goes into our restaurant. So this is a, it, it is a complete cycle. Uh, and his, uh, I think we will be able to uh, get a bigger machine as time goes along. And, uh, and you can see my daughter in the middle there. She has uh, managed to install uh, around the island through the GIZ. I think she had about six or eight uh, biodigesters when she was working for them that were functioning. So this is a really uh, simple way of disposing of uh, waste food. And it really digests just about everything and is very uh, low maintenance. Next slide, please. Okay, um, GIZ through G-Cruise um, have, um, uh, there was a grant going out, which very few hotels took up, unfortunately. Um, but uh, toilets use a phenomenal amount of water. Now, this isn't strictly speaking recycling, but it is a saving of, of, uh, of water. And we've, we've installed 60 of these toilets um, around the property. And we estimate that we, over a period of the year, we'll probably save over a quarter of a million dollars, a uh, quarter of a million gallons of water. Um, there's, a, there's a short flush and a long flush. The short flush is less than a gallon. Um, I think it's actually you know, just over a litre. Um, and then the long flush is uh, about a gallon. It's, they're phenomenally efficient, uh, modern toilets these days. Um, and um, so we're hoping that this will reduce our uh, water consumption and we need to we've had one of the driest wet seasons on record um, we had a little bit of rain uh, in the early November but basically from um, uh, August through to the end of October we virtually saw no rain at all um, with incredibly high temperatures and we are getting water shutoffs as we speak so uh, saving water is critical critical for uh, for the for these small countries Next slide, please. Uh, again, through um, um, uh, uh, G-Cruise, uh, we're installing uh, rainwater collection systems. Um, this is recycling of water, rainwater. Um, so uh, they, we've, we're installing uh, about, um, uh, well, we currently we have about half a million liters of capacity around the resort, uh, rainwater collection system. And we're adding another 55,000 um, litres uh, using black water tanks, catching as much of the uh, limited rain that we're getting now and putting them into uh, tanks. We're going to be using them for, uh, for growing our, uh, uh, you know, looking after our gardens, growing vegetables, lettuce. Um, the gardeners are always complaining to me that the iguanas that we have plenty of are eating all the lettuce, but uh, we quite like the iguanas. Um, but this uh, this will um, we, this will help us considerably with our, our rainwater with our water problems uh, down the road. Um, we're hoping to expand that even further. But that was done through a grant through G Crews, uh, where they paid eighty percent of the cost of the materials. Um, we had to pay twenty percent plus the labour to install. And it was uh, it was uh, uh, two or three hotels took up the program. Uh, and it's really an excellent program. I believe it's coming to an end soon, unfortunately. Next slide. Uh, we're installing hydroponics. You can see our gardener there, our head gardener. He's uh, we're, uh, simple systems, um, but we uh, we intend to expand those in uh, in 2024, uh, so that we'll be able to produce uh, a lot of our own lettuce um, and um, uh, and another other. other uh, vegetables and salads. Uh, we're also implementing, um, uh, we've got some solar ACs that we've uh, installed. Uh, this again is through G Cruise. Um, the, uh, this is again a, a grant funded and so there are grant fund lots of grant fundings out there for, for hoteliers to use and I would recommend anybody who's listening take the effort. It's a pain in the butt to apply for these things, it really is, but at the end of the day you, you do get something for it. Um, we've installed six of these ACs. We, we put them in the offices. They are run entirely from our um, uh, from our solar panels, from our, uh, our PV system. Um, so uh, uh, they basically cost us nothing 
to, uh, to cool down the offices. Next slide. Well, I can talk a bit more about this slide. Here we go, single use plastics. Oh gosh, these are, these are dreadful. Um, I, I, you know, the, the world has really degenerated into using single use plastics. Everybody uses plastic for everything, um, including water. Why we have to drink water from a plastic bottle, I, I don't know. But anyway, um, personally, I drink uh, tap water. Nawasa, our local water utility, produces excellent water. And unfortunately, the water companies have managed to persuade everybody that uh, uh, that it's not good water and you get you get uh, tummy bugs from it and uh, drink plastic water. Well, um, I've been drinking Nuasa water for, for as long as I've been in the Caribbean and uh, uh, don't seem to have had any ill effects from doing so. Um, but we, uh, we have had, um, I would say, 12 years now trying to persuade um, Coca-Cola to give us a soda fountain machine in the bar. They do not want to do it. They like to sell single use plastic containers and bottles. It's cheap for them. Um, and uh, we have eventually persuaded them through, uh, uh, through various means to try and, uh, uh, to so we can reduce the amount of uh, plastic bottles we use on the property. I mean, I've, we've just seen an increase of our uh, plastic use bottles rather than a decrease. Fortunately, a couple of the um, uh, water companies are now um, using glass bottles and recyclable glass bottles. So we are using them uh, for, uh, for our water. And we charge, uh, at the restaurant, we charge a lot for uh, people who want to use, drink plastic uh, water. Um, I think it's $15 a bottle. So you have a choice. You can pay $15 a bottle and um, uh, drink plastic water, or you can drink very good filtered pure water from Noasa, and it's free. So uh, our, our mission is to actually reduce the amount of, uh, of plastic bottles to zero within the next uh, 18 months. Thank you. Next slide. One of, the, uh, one of our most successful endeavors uh, over the last uh, four years has been to change our fleet entirely over to uh, EVs. Those of you who haven't tried an EV in the islands, do so as soon as is available. We have now five uh, vehicles. Um, in fact, our entire fleet, except for our truck, which is going to be replaced as soon as we can find a suitable model, uh, they are all um, EVs. Um, the, the cost savings on EVs are phenomenal. Um, basically, we've, uh, through measurement and, um, and, and, um, and, and watching our um, uh, expenses, we realized that the the savings on gas alone pays for the loan on the vehicles. So uh, it, it, it's, it's self-financing. self, it's self -financing. Um, Always the concern is that uh, uh, EVs, oh, how many miles does it do? It doesn't really matter. The fact is that most of the times, most of your journeys are very short. Grenada is 25 miles from north to south. Uh, one of those EVs, uh, the Peugeot in particular, will drive around the island five times. Uh, and basically what we do is we, when it's, when it's stationary, we plug it in. And on the, on the, uh, the slide there, you can see to the left of the picture, there's a uh, uh, solar panels. And on the roof above, there are solar panels. So basically the, uh, the EVs are being powered by the sun. Uh, during the day, we produce enough electricity from our solar panels to, um, uh, we, so we have actually zero consumption of, of, uh, of, of carbon generated. Uh, fuel. So um, um, they, these are powered by the sun. Um, I would recommend anybody who's thinking of buying a new vehicle, uh, go EV, because it's really the way to go. Next slide, if there is one. I think so. Yes, and uh, recycling. Well, um, I, I actually prefer to use the term reducing. Let's try to reduce the amount of, uh, of uh, stuff that we use rather than um, uh, recycle because recycling is it's very expensive as Mr. Roach said and it's difficult to organize uh, but we do all sorts of uh, interesting things uh, you can see the Christmas tree at the side there we, we just made a, a, a metal frame and uh, we use the same same tree every year and that's uh, decorated up put some glass bottles on it and away you go um, uh, so we're really committed to trying to uh, separate as much as, as possible. As I said in the past, we, um, um, 
we recycled the majority of our stuff, including paper. Um, you know, uh, funeral homes love uh, shredded paper. Uh, shredded paper they use to stuff bodies, and uh, there's, they always have a they always have there's always a dearth of paper around for them to do that. So we uh, found a friendly uh, a funeral home and supplied them with all the paper they need. Um, cardboard was another issue that, uh, that unfortunately is, used to be recycled, can't any longer because of the costs. Um, but uh, um, but it's uh, it's well worth trying, and we are we are planning. Um, to as soon as the government uh, initiatives are put in place, we will be one of the first to uh, uh, separate out as much as we can into the various different components, metal, cardboard, paper, plastics, and all the different plastics varieties, PTFEs, et cetera. Next slide. And finally, um, we have a very active green team. Um, our green team, uh, we have members from every department in the hotel. Uh, I think there's about 20, 20 members in the team. Uh, two, three, four times a year, we go out and uh, just clean up the roads, clean up the beaches. Um, and uh, uh, we, we have a lot of fun doing it, quite frankly. And of course, we invite the community, Dan. When we first started doing it, it was just, uh, just my family and maybe a couple of others would come in now. Now we have a huge following. Um, uh, and a lot of local kids, school kids, and uh, the local community join in these uh, in these initiatives, um, so that uh, uh, it really has become a uh, a social occasion as much as anything. And of course, the ultimate uh, aim is to just clean up the countryside, clean up the beaches, and uh, make our environment uh, a more pleasant place to be. Um, if anybody's got any questions at the end of this uh, presentation, I'm here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ross. That was excellent. And congratulations on all of the achievements um, at the property. The, the, the true blue team has um, gone above the standard green initiatives that, that, are, that are encouraged, um, that the hotels are encouraged to implement. So, you know, hats off and kudos to, to you and your team. Um, we enjoy doing it. <laughs> I, I, I absolutely love the Christmas a bottle Christmas tree, um, you know, that's creativity meeting, recycling, very, very nice. Um, so well done. So from one industry expert to another, we move from Grenada to St. Lucia. And um, on, 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 on any given day, Carolyn can perhaps represent um, several agencies. Uh, today, she's going to speak to us um, about the removal of um, single pla plastic uses at two of our hotels, as, to, as well as to give some insight into some of the other agencies she's involved in. Um, so, Carolyn, over to you. Um, thank you very much, Maria, for the introduction. I must say I really enjoyed this webinar so far. Fantastic presentation by Ronald and also Russ. Russ, you should know that whilst you were presenting, my own property manager, Carl Hunter, was on the line with Kevin at your property because I think we have a lot in common when it comes to uh, creating a better environment. So anyway, here I am. Um, uh, my husband and I own two resorts in St. Lucia and Chastanay in Shade Mountain. I'd like to joke that we operated sustainably before we actually knew that that term existed. And... Um, I have had a lot of leadership, uh, volunteer leadership positions within the hotel industry. I was president of the St. Lucia Hotel and Tourism Association for 10 years, president of the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association. But in recent years, my um, interest and leadership roles have shifted to conservation. I have the privilege of chairing the St. Lucia National Conservation Fund and also chairing the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund. And I still chair also the Education Foundation of CHDA. Um, we've had some, uh, I would say, some successes in our effort at the property to reduce plastics. Uh, we were very pleased that we were uh, presented this year with the CTO Sustainable Tourism Award. We are both resorts are Travel Life Goal certified. And uh, of course, OECS declared us the OECS Ocean Champion 2022. This was great. Other certifications that are out there we have um, also, and we really enjoy working with a grouping called Regenerative Travel. 
that is really, really critical. You can't just join them. You have to fill out a hundred page questionnaire to be allowed in. And I will talk about that a little bit later. So let me see if I can add a few new elements to what you have already heard. Um, clearly, um, I would say there was a lot of effort by the hotel industry um, to become greener and also in the Caribbean to reduce plastic, especially pre-COVID. Pre pre COVID sadly then brought a lot of our bad behaviors back. And now we're all trying to get out of it again. Um, the the, the no-brainer really was to try and get rid of these little plastic bottles, which are the in-room guest amenities, the takeout food containers and cutlery. And uh, furthermore, like Ross said, uh, Ross said, we're trying to stop our storeroom for continuously purchasing plastic bags. I mean, we have uh, reusable laundry bags. Um, last year, we also introduced our own water bottling um, uh, system. So we make our own water on property. That was quite a big investment. Um, we also got rid of, of garbage bin inserts and are using reusable ones uh, that are made from, from fabric. We have given our guests refillable water bottles and have hydrating stations. And so that all has helped to, to reduce uh, the plastic on property. Um, it always feels like going two steps forward and one step back. And one does feel pretty much alone in the exercise. And I think that there's real opportunity for OECS to pull us all together and see how we can do more together. Um, we also have a dive operation. We have our own coral nurseries. Um, I have not focused on that for this webinar since we are talking about plastic, but obviously we do a lot of um, um, advocacy and also trying to um, do our diving against debris and, and do reef cleaning uh, regularly. Um, the gentleman that is my, I would say, collaborator with whom we couldn't do anything at Anshastane is Mr. Carl Hunter, our property manager. He is extremely knowledgeable. And uh, obviously um, we are trying to, to, to um, go above and beyond in our efforts. We have, for example, done our own landfill diversion project that really meant that we found um, a, a location on our property to, to store separately stainless steel, sheet steel and scrap metal, electronic waste bottles and some plastics. And we're able to invite our informal recyclers to, to take care of it. So that was quite successful. Um, we are also obviously uh, trying to be careful with whom we work from from purchasing perspective. And for example, we were able when with our farmers to encourage them to not use plastic for everything and just bring us trays so that we get rid of some of the packaging there. Uh, on the composting and soil generation, um, you already heard uh, about the um, biogas um, digester, so I don't have to go into detail, but that's also really a great way to, to try and, and, and reduce what goes into the landfill, but most importantly, also reduce the methane, and that eventually then leads to, um, uh, of course, greenhouse gases. Um, again, we operate clearly with the, with the idea to reduce, reduce, replace, and recycle. Um, Ronald has done a great job to look at the challenges that we face um, nationally and regionally. And so I don't have to dive too deeply into it, but obviously um, to sustain the tourism sector will require not only trash removal, but also improving solid waste disposal practices on land and investment in sustainable coast coastal and reef ecosystems. That statement was already done by UNEP in 2014. And then you have learned that uh, the lack of land areas and resources available for the safe disposal of waste population growth, the growing tourism industry and the increase in imports of polluting and hazardous substances combined to make pollution prevention and waste management a critical issue. Okay, we know that. Um, so um, interesting enough, uh, when there was a waste, um, I would say project um, examination project in St. Lucia, it turned out that the tourism industry only contributed about 15% to the landfill um, Deglo in, in St. Lucia. I found that interesting. I would have guessed it to be much higher. But that shows you, though, that the tourism industry should not just look at it from the perspective of um, how can we as a 
company as an organization reduce waste, but also really embrace the advocacy opportunity we have with our own staff, not just with the guests, but also the team members, because clearly this problem is a lot bigger than the tourism industry. We have to change our whole attitude towards waste as a, as a country. Now, in terms of um, who, who gives us inspiration, I already mentioned regenerative travel, and uh, I, I put on this slide um, uh, a link to regenerativetravel.com resources, and they have a really fantastic resource management and waste recycling uh, document there that I find highlights the opportunities and the challenges. Re regenerative travel has uh, member companies from all over the world, and I find it very, very depressing and inspirational at the same time when we see presentations from other companies because it shows you the long way we have to go, but sometimes it also gives you really good ideas. And again, I think that's the opportunity for the OECS to pull us together because we don't showcase the best practices often enough. And when you showcase best practices, especially to the show to the tourism sector, we do get competitive. We want to be part of the movement. We want to showcase that we can do this too. In terms of challenges out there, I mean, obviously for tourism, we need to find values aligned suppliers. That means that you really want to work with suppliers that understand that we want to reduce the packaging that's being used. Now, very interesting is also tracking and analyzing data, which I don't think many of us have embraced yet. Regenerative travel uses a software tool called Weaver, which enables data collection for measurement and reporting purposes. Um, Educating staff is critical. I think that I would take that further and say educating our staff, but whatever we can do to educate our, our, our population, our people, but also the young people to really understand the importance of, of, of paying attention of how we deal with our waste and how we can reduce weight, waste. Um, on the empowering the community, I mean, again, uh, from hosting beach cleanups to employing local artisans to upcycle waste, building community buy-in is essential to creating cultural shifts, which we just mentioned. Then you do want to engage your guests, obviously, and in, in, in not getting angry when they can't have a plastic water bottle, but understanding why we do it. Um, it is interesting. I was, um, um, and you know, I'm I have lived and worked in the Caribbean for 40 years, for zero. Uh, but I am originally German, and I, I think that Germany has really um, done an amazing job with recycling and, and waste reduction. But I was in a hotel, and uh, I, I realized that I was the only person using the plastic, the, the refillable water bottle they made available. And everybody else still carried around. Um, plastic bottles. So I think really there is a lot that we can do to also get our guests to embrace um, the whole system, the whole idea of why we're trying to, to reduce the plastic. And then finding alternatives to difficult to replace plastics. Well, I mean, obviously that is an ongoing um, um, uh, challenge. Uh, you could, for example, consider using beeswax wrappers uh, instead of cling film, just for an example. And then designing functional sorting systems, well, that's already where the challenge gets big because that costs money. So is there funding available? Is there funding and encouragement available for to, for hotels to, to be able to in, in, um, implement something like this? And then, of course, from when it comes to repurposing and upcycling, um, that means that, uh, you know, uh, whilst the first step to managing waste more responsibly, responsibly is eliminating it at a source, upcycling can also be very valuable, creative and cost effective. But again, here we need to work together. It's not something that we can do um, alone. And I think there is where I'm looking forward also to find um, perhaps uh, how we can embrace these informal recyclers that exist uh, more with the solid waste uh, movement so that there is better collaboration between recycling and also the solid waste authorities on our in our countries. Um, so clearly, we I think that any public private partnership to enhance waste management infrastructure is 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 important and uh, will assist. Um, collaboration with um, local communities, NGOs, and government bodies for effective waste management. Um, I haven't quite gone yet to the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund in my presentation, but I want to say to Ronald that you have national conservation funds, both in Dominica and in Grenada, and I would love for you to embrace them and, and include them in the dialogue, because again, I feel sometimes we are really disjointed in, in the Caribbean and also the OECS. We don't know 
what we all are doing. We don't necessarily know what organizations are out there. And I think sometimes that leads to duplication of effort. And I think if we could really create this amazing um, knowledge bank of who is out there, what is the best practices that would help us to, to find what I call the low hanging fruit. I have been in, mm -hmm. in so many um, meetings that last up to four hours where, where we create complex 2000 page documents about what all needs to happen and then you're really just so depressed at the end because you really can't see the trees anymore because you're now in a gigantic forest so i often say to to have that little committee that finds the low-hanging fruit is the way forward um, for the oppor opportunities for the hospitality industry i mean obviously cost savings new business opportunities but also enhancing your brand image and attracting eco-conscious tourists through your sustainable practices and you want to we want to become destination stewards destination stewardship is still something out there that neither um, tourism authorities uh, or the hotel associations in the countries have fully embraced not that they are ignoring it but i think we can do more together and i hope that we are all moving in that direction now regional financing and collaboration opportunities um again let's not reinvent the wheel there are certain organizations that the OECS should embrace. Um, the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association is a regional body, the umbrella organization for your national hospitality and tourism associations. You can take the OECS um, hotel associations, work with them. Um, you have Global Tourism Plastics Initiative out there, Travel Foundation, uh, with TUI Care Foundation, GIZ, all of them have really uh, um, opportunities uh, to be embraced for, for funding or at least know-how. The Caribbean Alliance for Sustainable Tourism is, is an initiative by the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association. And again, this is really uh, where we have our experts that also could help the OECS from, uh, from an Eastern Caribbean perspective, how to go forward. I want to also mention, um, we have tried at uh, in St. Lucia, and I'm really sorry we are not one of your first countries. I'm very, I'm very jealous of Dominique and Grenada right now, Ronald. But um, we um, try to embrace a small waste reduction project, and we wanted to do so with Care Caribbean and uh, also with the help of Tropical Shipping that has had kindly offered to help hotels to remove their um their weight their recyclable products from the island and uh the, the hotel association in St. Lucia, together with the tourism enhancement fund did underwrite a small um budget for us to develop this it hasn't gone very far why because honestly it comes again down to capacity the hotel associations can help tremendously with embracing the tourism sector but you also need to provide some funding for them to be able to build capacity to to get projects of that nature that hold a lot of potential and get them processed uh, much further now the time has come for me to switch hats very quickly and talk to you about the caribbean biodiversity fund um if you want to learn more about the caribbean biodiversity fund you should uh, visit the website caribbeanbiodiversityfund.org but very briefly um, the fund was established in 2012, and uh, we are the umbrella charity Caribbean centric that works with 12 national conservation trust funds in the Caribbean. Uh, quite a few of them are in the Eastern Caribbean, um, Grenada, St. Lucia, Dominica, St. Vincent, St. Kitts, for example, and also Antigua. So um, uh, again, these are Caribbean Biodiversity Fund is a good partner for the OECS to engage with, and I know that you have been talking to us. Um, our primary focus is really creating reliable and long-term funding for conservation and sustainable development in the Caribbean. And we operate um, through three main programs, the Conservation Finance Program, the Climate Change Program, and the Nature-Based Economies Program. Um, generally, we have an endowment fund, which stands at about 90 million US dollars, and we have a sinking fund that is about $80 million at this point. What's really most interesting for our webinar today is that we have just launched our ACE facility, the Advancing the Circular Economy. And for the OECS, the countries that could benefit from that are uh, Grenada, St. Lucia, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The ACE facility 
uh, is underwritten with about $28 million. And we will work with both public and private sector partners, as well as other Caribbean stakeholders to fund projects that promote and apply practical circular economy principles to minimize and prevent waste from entering the marine environment and also removing marine litter. This is to be achieved um, by investments in equipment and infrastructure, but also by generation of data and knowledge, policy support, and education of consumers. And this particular facility, the Advancing Circular Economy Facility, is funded through a sinking fund by the KFW uh, on behalf of the Federal Ministry of Economic Cooperation and Development uh, of Germany. Um, so again, here you see that approximately 18 to 20 individual projects are um, envisioned until um, end of its operation in 27, 28. And there will be two calls for proposals. I think I'm almost at the end. And uh, that, in fact, is it. I have put in here my contact details and also a nice picture of Carl Hunter. Um, you know, again, uh, we, I, every hotel needs to have their champion that drives this whole idea forward. You, you can't do it without having the know-how in-house, unless, of course, the OECS can provide these experts that go from hotel to hotel and help our hotels to develop um, processes and systems. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Carolyn. Um, you know, you presented quite a bit of information in in a in a very short space of time. Um, and and thank you for all of those practical examples and um, and you know sharing some of the resources that are available. Um, you know, you spoke about the the partnerships and collaboration and data tracking and. Um, advocacy and you know we also heard you loud and clear about you know the OECS's role in bringing everybody together so um, thank you for all of those great recommendations so now we have um, we do have some time for some questions and answers and um, at this point I would like to um, just let's go back up let's go back up to 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 Ronald um and so okay so everybody's on yes okay so um ronald in your in you know you you spoke about the two pilot projects um the two uh countries in in dominica and grenada and and, and carolyn said how jealous she was of that it's you know saint lucia had not been selected um but you had mentioned that there the persons you know should to get involved. Um, how can the tourism stakeholders in Dominica and Grenada get, in, get involved? Yeah, so thanks for that. And, and just to clarify, so I mean, the Recycle OECS project is for all of the OECS. Um, we do have the demonstrations actually taking place in, in Grenada and Dominica, but we're also working with the St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority to um, help develop a sustainable financing system for them for all of waste management, recognizing that there are challenges with even the existing waste management system that needs to be addressed before they um, go into uh, you know, full recycling activities. With respect to the demonstration projects in particular, um, through the Recycle OECS project, we will be reaching out. We have already started reaching out to various stakeholders in, in both countries, and we would um, soon be organizing uh, specific stakeholder sessions for the tourism sector, as well as the um, the manufacturing sector. And so so uh, the details of the programs will be rolled out in, in Dominic. It's uh, slightly different to what will be happening in Grenada. So in Dominica, there's a curbside uh, recycling program already in place um, through the Dominica Solid Waste Management Corporation. They have done quite a fantastic job in setting up that program, and we are providing the technical assistance to that. Uh, so it will be the hoteliers getting involved in source separation, separating their plastics, um, and arrangements being made to to collect that um, in 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 both countries. Um, it was quite um in 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 Saint Lucia actually we had uh 
program, a previous program, the Replus um, recycling program, recycling pilot project there. And we were looking to roll it out within um, the hotels there. And I was involved in, in just taking a bin and, and putting it in different places within a hotel just to see, you know, where, where it might be best situated. And just in that 10 minute period that we were doing that, there were so many of the hotel guests that said, oh, we're looking forward to this. And so, so, you know, the demand is there. And we know that once we roll out these programs that the hotels will in fact come on board because the guests demand it of them almost. So, um, so yeah, within uh, the next um, month or so, uh, the month, month or two, we'll be rolling out those programs and getting the, um, the hoteliers involved. Yeah. Great. Um, thank you. Thank you for that, um, Ronald. Um, and if I can just ask you one more quest question before we move on to um, to, to Russ. Um, you had also, in your presentation, you had also mentioned about um, um, guidance on waste audits. Is, is there um, some recommendations or um, agencies that you can you can point the, the the tourism sector to that can provide some guidance on how to go about these waste audits. So there are different toolkits uh, available. I can always share those. Um, and of course, as a consulting company, we are also involved in in those efforts. Um, to a certain extent, uh, the the hotels can can in fact do it on their own. But if you know a lot of the details are required, and if it's something that they don't have resources for, and so then there are companies that also do that. Um, but uh, yeah, it is important to understand the waste. Um, in Trinidad, uh as one of the countries who has passed waste management rules, um, every organization is now required to do that. So they're required to report to the Environmental Management Authority uh, what waste that they are generating and what are their plans for that waste, uh, if it's going to the landfill or if it's going to be recycled. And so, and to know that you have to do a waste audit. So um, to some extent, it's now a requirement in Trinidad, all the, the law is a new law, it's, it was passed in 2021. Um, but, you know, as I said, in, in doing that, it really opens your mind in terms of how much different items are being generated and, and, um, and end up as waste. And then once you see that, once you see the figures, you can then um, come up with ideas in terms of how to, um, how to address those, those different waste streams. Um, thank you. Thank you for that. So maybe if you can put some of the tool, toolkits in the chat, that would be great. Um, so with that, obviously, we have to ensure that our, um, our teams at our hotels are motivated and involved. And, I, and, and you know, um, uh, Carolyn mentioned, mentioned Carl. Um, Russ, I'd like to ask the question, um, you have obviously a, 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 a green team that does a lot of the work um, on at the at True Blue. So how do you how do you keep the team motivated? How do you um, get them to keep on churning out these initiatives and and keeping focused? How do you keep them motivated? Oh, it's really simple, pizza. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you, you have a meeting and you offer pizza. And it's it's oh, amazing. Okay. Food. Food is okay. what motivates. No, I, I mean, I'm being a little facetious, but it certainly does help. I mean, when, when we do our, our street and beach cleanups, we always end up with a little party at the end of it and some drinks, non-alcoholic usually, um, and some food, uh, salt fish and bakes or whatever else it is, you know, because usually we do those early in the morning. But I tell you, food is amazing motivator. <laughs> Um, but I think, you know, one, when people are, uh, when they start to realize what they're doing and how they're contributing towards the society, it, it becomes self-motivating. But you do have to do the, get the initial carrots out there and, um, uh, and um, you know, persuade them to come and participate. We, I mean, one of the other things that we do, we go around to uh, schools and talk about uh, waste reduction and, uh, and plastic pollution and, and the rest of it. And, um, you know, 
at first they don't like to do it because they're shy and they you know they're not educators of course but when they realize that they they've got a lot more knowledge than the people they're talking to the kids in other words um they become confident and um you know it builds up their confidence and uh, their knowledge uh, they set as well so um it's sort of self-generating um and, and just uh, we use uh, in terms of uh, uh, collating data we were talking about that just now with mr roach um we use green globe and they've been very very useful in helping us um you know focus on where we should be um going and they they also uh, intend to uh, i mean there's several there's several agencies that do it like uh, uh, ronald was saying um, but certainly green globe have been very helpful um and they'll say well, okay what are you what what targets do you want to meet for the next uh, two years and we'll present the targets and a year's time they'll come back to us and say well how are you getting on with your targets it's uh you know it's, it, it really does help a lot to have somebody like that on our backs Right. We're not not completely innocent, you know. We we we're not left to our own devices, and it, it does help. Yeah, great. Um, and 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 I mean, you say that you know you have the support from from Green Globe and others. Um, how how tell us a little bit about how you measure your success, um, the success of your initiatives. Um, you know, you obviously have things that you've set out to do. Um, you know, you just spoke. You just mentioned about indicators. I mean, but how how do you measure the success of your initiatives that you implement? Well, I mean, uh, for instance, our consumption of electricity. Let's get down to basics. I mean, um, by installing um, uh, solar panels, PV systems uh, in the property, we've reduced our our electricity bill substantially over the last uh, five years, and that is that is simply measurable by measuring our the amount of electricity we use per day per room. Uh, we, we divide it per, per, per room that's used, opened, um, and uh, we can actually see what our uh, consumption of electricity per, per unit, per key is. Um, and uh, similarly with the water, what, what is our water water and sewage bill from Noasa? How is, how is uh, putting the water systems in place, the, the systems and the water tanks and everything else, and how is that uh, uh, reduced over the, uh, over the uh, you know, three or four or five years? And we are seeing reductions. Um, likewise, the, uh, and, and I say one of our failures, sometimes, you know, you've got to experiment um, and you have failures. And one of our failures has been the recycling programs. Uh, as I say, back in two, uh, 2017, we were recycling 60 to 80 percent of all of our waste. And currently it's zero, which is incredibly disappointing. So the OECS initiative now is very exciting. I mean, we're ready to go. Um, we just got nowhere to recycle it at the moment. There's nowhere at all to do it, but the programs are coming in place, coming online, and uh, we'll be there right at the beginning, ready to go. We say we have a recycling shed. Uh, we already have the bins in place, uh, like uh, Ronald was saying earlier on, um, and we uh, uh, and, and we know that our, our guests will, uh, in general, will participate. Um, so, uh, and our, our housekeeping staff are fully trained up and ready to go. Uh, it'll take six months before they, it gets really into the culture. But I can tell you one thing that happened that was quite interesting um, six years ago. Um, our staff would bring their waste to the hotel, their, their recycled waste. They'd bring their plastic bottles and their glass, because we're making glass, uh, uh, glasses out of, uh, uh, out of the bottles, um, and other items, and put them in our recycling program. Um, uh, of course, that dropped off as well. but. Uh, I think that will start again. People will start using our facilities to recycle their own personal um, goods. That's interesting. That's that's very mm. interesting. Um, Carolyn, if I can um, have you jump in here, um, you know how how difficult is it? I mean, I know you have I know you have your Carl Hunter, and I know Carl does an excellent job. But how difficult is it to? educate your your staff and bring staff on board with some of the initiatives that you you um are, 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 are attempting to implement um you know speaking for our own properties having someone like carl that speaks very well knowledgeable uh, knowledgeably and also really uh, aspirationally inspirationally to the staff obviously we we have a, just like ross we have a very good environmental team that takes um, this all very seriously. But uh, 
what I would like to say generally is for the hotel industry, not everybody is lucky to have a call. Not everybody has that type of person on 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 staff. <clears throat> So for me, uh, for example, I mentioned I'm still chairing the Education Foundation of the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association. Traditionally, our training programs have always been geared towards customer service or culinary excellence. I think there's a real opportunity to also use bodies like the Education Foundation to come up with a sustainability training program to help our hotels not to have to do it in, in-house, but yes. come in there, <laughs> and with me, and uh, going further, maybe even develop sustainability certifications so that staff can say I've went I've gone through this sustainability um, you know program and I'm certified I think that would be really good and it adds everybody in the hotel industry love to showcase that they've done training that, that they have a certificate so I think it would be excellent and help the sec the whole industry maybe the OECS wants to offer such a certificate <laughs> thank and, you Carolyn we, great we, idea we have, great we idea a, we have a, a laundry list of, of 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 ideas for the for the OECS. Um, but as a follow up question, Carolyn, um, what kind of response do you get? And 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 Russ, I'll come back to you on that as well. Um, what kind of response do you get from the guests, the guests themselves, when they know that you are, um, you know, doing all of these programs and and um, you know, you you, you know, th this is your focus. What's the response like from the uh, from the guest? So it's interesting because again, um, it's it's something that changes year to year. I was asked this question a few years ago, and I said, I don't think that the consumer is ready yet to select a destination or a hotel because of their sustainable efforts, right? But I do see now that people pay attention to what we claim we do. And if you then find a plastic bag or a plastic bottle, they say, excuse me, you said you have a bottling program. Why are you giving me a plastic bottle? So in a way, there is certainly more uh, awareness, which I love, but I think um, we still have an, uh, you know, uh, a need to educate the, the customer further and, and take the opportunity in the environment that we have created to highlight to them the importance, especially because they don't think it's true that small island developing states or small island nations have completely different challenges when it comes to recycling or waste reduction. So. It's it's a good thing to keep advocating and 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 making our guests aware. The um, let me say the last thing we are offering a behind the scenes tours with our car my star car. But again, that really helps guests to understand better because he does an excellent job to showcase our behind the scenes efforts, also our waste water management, and and then of course he talks a lot about the whole waste and recycling and and water bottling. Okay, excellent. So that's like a. A, 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 a specialized tour. That's um, that's actually really, 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 really good. So, um, so Russ, if I can go back to you, um, you know, what 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 is the feedback from from some of your your guests? Oh well, you know, very similar to uh, Carolyn's, in fact. Uh, um, but I, I would say that currently, um, I would say ten percent of our guests book the hotel because we are. Uh, environmentally friendly. I hate to use that word because it's sort of not quite what we are, but but uh, because of our awareness of the environment. Um, so uh, it's, I believe there's how do, a, the, how there's do you a, how do you determine that it's ten percent? Well, we we ask them. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's, Fair it's, enough. Um, <laughs> it's uh, uh, you know why did you choose our hotel? And a lot of them, a lot of people now. Uh, are using coming to the hotel because of our environmental uh, stance, um, um, and I think that's a growing um, a, a growing quantum of the of the tourism sector. I mean, you'll still get the fly and flops and the uh, you know sandals guests. But I was talking to Peter Fraser from Sandals uh, yesterday, uh, and he said that more and more of his guests are far more interested now. Uh, about going in and visiting the communities and, and visiting sites around the island than they were five years ago. They're, they used to just go and stay at Sandals and not move from the site. Now, they're, now they want to go and uh, visit uh, the various sites around um, and, and, and experience the culture of, of the island. Um, and that's one step towards you know, uh, being aware of the issues that we have as small island developing states. So I think 
the, the fu- I think the future for the small hotels like ourselves um, is definitely with that uh, with that clientele base. Excellent. No question. Excellent. So there is a there is another question for you um, in 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 the chat. Um, um, so one of the participants would like to know whether um, the government of Grenada has implemented a reduction in import tax for the electrical vehicles. Uh, yes, they have. Okay. Sorry, there's, there's a very noisy motorcycle outside. I hope you can't hear it. Um, yes, they have. Um, we are. They've reduced it down. To, uh, it's fifty percent, I believe, at the moment, which is uh, of of the of a uh, standard gasoline engine. So the duty's reduced to fifty percent. Um, and uh, we're lobbying hard to try and get it down to 25%. My uh, argument to the government is that it should be zero for electric vehicles. Um, and there's some traction um, in that respect. Um, and I don't think, you know, of course, you know, they always say, well, what about a loss of revenues? But it, it won't really impact the revenues because over the next two years, you've got to actually get the public on board with EVs. Um, and then you, you then you slowly increment uh, put the incremental taxes on, but at fifty percent, it's um, the I we bought a new Peugeot, which is a, which is a first for us, by the way, um, and it was the same price as a gasoline engine car, same same same. The you know, landed cost was exactly the same, and of course it cost us zero to run. So you know there, there's really uh, there's no reason why if you're buying a new car why you shouldn't be buying a uh, an EV. The moment and of course the maintenance costs on running an ev is virtually zero as well all you've got to do is replace the tires and the brakes and the shock absorbers shock absorbers being one thing that are universally um, difficult to uh, uh, deal with on, in these islands where we have potholes that you can rent out you know? right so i'd like to um um go back to ronald ronald there's a there's a there's a question from um one of the parties the audience uh, has the demonstration waste management project commenced in Dominica? So some some aspects um, of the project have commenced. We have, uh, the well, even before the project or whilst the project was being set up, the Dominica Solid Waste Management Corporation has in fact been um, running a curbside collection system. So what we are doing is providing the technical assistance and um, the stakeholder engagements for that. So that has started. We have started the stakeholder engagements to uh, get uh, the various stakeholders um, inputs with respect to how the system should be developed. And so, and in January in Dominica, we are continuing with the stakeholder engagements. Um, we have a number of activities planned there. Um, so, so yes, it has, it has commenced, but of course there's, there's much more to be done. Um, we have to, uh, aggressively get the commercial sector and the industrial sector, including the tourism sector involved. Um, and, uh, and then, um, more of the community engagement and so forth. So, so yeah. Okay. Um, and, and, um, Grenada in terms of the, the, the. So in, in, in Grenada, now uh, some of the systems are still being set up. So the Grenada Solid Waste Management Authority is um, in, in uh, installing some of um, the equipment required at their uh, facility. Um, so they're developing a, a recycling facility. Um, and But again, the, the engagements have started and the uh, the rollout of the actual collection is, is still to take place, and that should happen in early January. We have, um, just to step in there, we have a serious problem, as I'm sure most islands do, is that our uh, the Perseverance, our, our, our waste site, um, has got, uh, we just opened up a new section of it, it has five years life expectancy. Um, yeah. But I was just speaking to one of the management, and they said they've already used in the last uh, four months, one years of that uh, that. Uh, um, facility. So uh, we have some serious problems we have got to address quickly um, because if we don't find a way of recycling most of our, our goods, then we're in trouble. We don't know where to put stuff. And fly tipping is already uh, a problem around the island. Um, you know, people dumping stuff in the bush. Um, and, you know, it, 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 one, of the, one of the issues we have is that as soon as 
you charge to put to uh, to dump stuff in the at the dump, um, people will start fly tipping. So it's got to be free. Um, and <laughs> it's sort of counterintuitive. You think you know somebody's got to pay for it, but if you make if you make it uh, um, if you charge for it, then people will fly tip. Uh, which creates more of a problem than if it's uh, if we got run out of space there. So, uh, yeah, we have some serious problems in Grenada. Okay, so um, we uh, um, we we are informed that Grenada has added the public utilities registration. Um, I, I'm not sure. Okay, uh, you are PC. Okay, they're in the dialogue with the stakeholders. The stake, they're in dialogue with stakeholders and communities to establish the registration and the tariffs. Okay, so thank you for for that um, that information, um, Carolyn. I would just like before we, because we're gonna wrap up in a little bit. But Carolyn, um, can you? Uh, the, one of the questions that have been posed by the audience, both yourself and 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 Russ, made reference to. Um, it being more difficult since COVID um, and, and that, you know, we've kind of gone back to, we've, you know, we've regressed and gone back to, to bad habits. So the question is, what, can you ex please explain why it has been more difficult to recycle since COVID? What happened to the country's capacity to recycle and why did the bad habits return? So, um, Carolyn, you can respond first and then may maybe Russ, you can come in after. So the comment I made about COVID is that we were obliged to bring back single-use plastics as a requirement for the reopening. So whilst pre-COVID, we undertook so many efforts to reduce single-use plastics, we were basically obliged to bring them back. And so um, you've, you, you have to go through the whole cycle again to find a way to take them out again and, and break all the bad habits again. So that is what I refer to. The recycling has always been, I would say, uh, very limited um, in, in, in St. Lucia, at least. And as you know, even, even if we would have um, separated our, our waste at the hotel level, as Ronald has highlighted, um, sadly, with the way the landfill and solid waste operates, everything then gets thrown back together at the landfill. So that hasn't changed. That was bad before COVID, and um, it's not great now and obviously there are some recyclers but it needs to just happen on a much grander scale to make a difference okay um and 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 russ well it's very very similar in, in fact i believe it was before covid that really the uh, the downturn started because um well our plastic was all being exported uh, china was taking it and uh, that that stopped worldwide um and, and the price of uh, uh, scrap metal uh, reduced so we couldn't you couldn't recycle the metal so it's um, uh, so basically all the recyclers that were on the island the small businesses uh, went out of business um, they just closed down because there was no money in it and that's something that the governments of the of the uh, Caribbean have to uh, address um, it has to be um, you need you need the private sector but they have to be subsidized or they have to be helped by government uh, in areas like this because they're basically they're helping society by uh, by recycling the items so they have to have some sort of concessions to be able to operate and we need them we need them badly we need them to come back we need those uh, those companies to uh, uh, to reinvigorate the uh, the business because without them uh, recycling is going to be very very difficult we can't expect solid waste here in Grenada and and, uh, and solution Dominica to take the full brunt because they haven't got the capacity um, but a, a, a private public relationship does partnership yeah so thanks, yeah thanks, thanks for that um so i this you know as we wrap up um maybe just for everybody to give their sort of last last thoughts and their, their, their last words um ronald we start with we start we, we, we start with you um your your final thoughts um recommendations um final words 
Uh, yeah, just just to reiterate that, you know, waste management is everyone's business. We have to all get involved. Um, we all generate waste and we have to recognize we're part of the problem and we have to be part of the solution. So um, to make the efforts to just get involved, um, understand what is going on in with the Recycle OECS project. Um, it's uh, there's information available on the OECS's website. Um, and to make the effort um, one step at a time, if you're still using plastic um, water bottles to make that change and 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 uh, have your reusable bottle and um, even if it's filtered, but make the change um, and get involved more and more progressively. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, Russ, your, your parting words? Well, I think really, what we have to get is the individual's responsibility. Um, it's so easy for somebody to say, well, it doesn't make, it makes no difference if I'm just drinking from a plastic bottle. Um, and we're using plastic bottles as, as a sort of an example. Um, we have to really educate everybody um, uh, from an individual to the, the big businesses and to government. But it starts with the individual. If the individuals uh, are, are aware of the problems, uh, then government becomes aware through, through proxy. Um, so uh, yeah, let's let's get our let's get our staff educated. Let them educate their their families and their and their kids, um, and then it'll it'll really work well. It has to start from the bottom upwards, and from the top down, as governments have to buy into the programs as well, of course. Indeed, indeed. Um, Carolyn, um, your final thoughts. No, I mean, Ross said it very um, well. I mean, it, it has to start from bottom up, but uh, speaking specifically to the hotel industry, I would just say again, embrace all of the organizations out there, help them with the capacity building so that they can play that role that they must to to help the hospitality sector to get more sustainable, to, to reduce um, the waste. And uh, I think that uh, let's... Let's look, I, I say that over and over for the low hanging fruit. If you make it too complex, we don't get anywhere. Start small and uh, celebrate our successes, however sm small they are, and then we just go step by step towards greater goals. Thank you, thank you for that. Um, so, I mean, I think that, that today we would have seen that um, there are examples and many examples of good practices within the OECS and, and um, you know, we can adopt the sustainable approaches um, in, in, in tourism and um, it's to also to the benefit of the businesses, um, you know, cost wise and to, to reduce the, 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 the waste. Uh, we certainly hope that this um, webinar has provided um, some support and guidance um, on waste management practices. Uh, towards greener operations um, by the hospitality and tourism sector. We, we certainly thank our, our panelists for their presentations and the information shared. Um, and, and we would like to thank the, the team um, at the OECS, in particular the Environmental Sustainability Division, um, who this, this uh, Recycle OECS project falls under. Um, and all of the supporting staff, um, IT and comms for facilitating us this morning. So thank you everybody for participating. It was a pleasure. And um, you, you know, we, 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 we will all work towards um, doing our, our little bit, whatever we can do individually and as businesses. So thank you for joining us and good afternoon, everybody. <laughs>